Today, guys, I want to talk to you about the victim mindset and why this is really the most toxic mindset you can adopt in a relationship because this is not only going to make you weaker as a person, but also it's impossible to create a thriving relationship with this or even reconcile with this. So if you want any chance of reconciliation, you have to get rid of this victim mindset once and for all. I'm also going to show you why it's really hard for people to understand that they're actually falling for the victim mindset and why a lot of people are falling for this trap of what we call the blind victim. And finally, I'm also gonna show you the five things you can do to start to get rid and reprogram away from your victim mindset here. And once you do that, you really find that your life will change in a massive, massive way. And in case you're new to this channel, my name is Jeffrey and I help men in long-term relationships or in marriages with the right mindsets, knowledge, skills to be able to design a thriving relationship or reconcile if you're in the brink of a divorce or separation, etc. So if you want more content on this topic, be sure to subscribe to this channel and also click the bell button as well to be notified when I post a new video every single week. And before I begin this video, know that the masterclass is still available. So if you want to join that masterclass, check out the link that I'll post at the end of this video. So first, let's talk about what it actually means to play victim. And for this, I want to start with a common misconception people have about what it means to play victim. So if you ask a lot of people, what does it mean to play victim? They will always talk about the concept of faults. Is it my fault? Is it your fault? Whose fault is it? And most people associate also playing victim as a weak thing to do. But this is actually not what playing victim means at all. To understand what it means to play victim, we need to understand the principle of responsibility. So if you look at the word responsibility, you can break it out into two parts, responsibility. So to understand responsibility, let me give you uh, the example that I give a lot of my clients, which is the elevator example. So let's say you are stepping into an elevator and in this elevator, you see a man who's dying on the corner of the elevator. If your idea of playing victim or not is, is it my fault or not? Is it your fault that this man is dying? No, it's not your fault. So if that's how you think, would you be motivated to actually help this man? No. But if you change your paradigm to about responsibility, are you able to respond to that man dying in the elevator right now? Answer is always yes. And when you understand it this way, you realize that even when you choose not to respond, that is a response in and of itself. And that's the principle of responsibility. It's different from understanding whose fault it is and etc. This is about, are you able to respond? And the answer should be always yes, because your response is always within your control. Now, when you play victim, that is when you either deny in denial of, or you forget this principle of responsibility. And once we understand this, we understand that there's actually many different ways that people can play victim. The most common one is when people play what we call the equal blame illusion. This one, someone says, well, my partner doesn't want to try to save this relationship. She's not making this any easier. So why should I do all the work? The second one is what we call blame shifting, which is a classic term of gaslighting. This is when every time something happens, you're always pointing the fault at your partner. Well, it's not my fault, so why should I fix it? And the third one is what we call the unique or special circumstances illusion. And this is when a lot of people think that the situation is the most dire somehow, the most unique, the most different. And when you do this, whatever solutions you get, whatever advice you get, you'll always reject it. Even though the advice can be really good, even though the thing that can actually solve your problem is staring you right in the face because you think your situation is so unique, you're not going to take it because you're always going to find some exceptions of why that thing wouldn't work. These people are usually very uncoachable. They're very demotivated because they think to themselves, what's the point of even trying? What's the point of even doing anything? What's the point of even learning? Because nothing fits my situation. The fourth one is what we call the pity or woe is me illusion. This is when someone's going through some difficult times and they like to appear like they're suffering and they want other people to pity them. They want other people to know they're suffering and they're always playing this dramatic, oh my gosh, my life is so difficult. My life is so tough kind of victim mindset. And number five is what we call the finished product illusion. This is when you think you're so perfect and you're always pinning the blame on other people. So whenever you are on the brink of a divorce, for example, you'll always say, well, it's not really my fault. It's not a problem with me. She's the one who wants to divorce. She's the one who wants to do that. So this is a combination of blame shifting, but bred out of this notion that there's nothing that you need to work on. The problem is never with you. There's a lot more ways that people victimize themselves, but if you look at any forms of victimization, it's always when you're either forgetting or in denial of the fact that you are able to respond to the world at any point in time. 
And some people try to escape or deny this by trying to shift the blame on things outside their control, right? On their partner's fault, on the government's fault, on nature's fault, on the kid's fault, whatever it is. The other one is, again, when you think that your experiment is special, so if it's special and so unique and so different, then there's nothing you can do about it. So you don't have to be responsible. Now this brings me to my second topic, which is why a lot of victims cannot catch the fact that they're actually playing victim. And this is what I call the blind victim illusion. Because if you look at comments all over the internet, or even in my videos sometimes, there's gonna be a lot of people playing the victim, blaming other people, blaming the situation, thinking that situation is unique. And whenever you try to coach or respond to these people, they are so blind to it that there's nothing you can say to make them see that they're actually playing victim. And that's actually five very good reasons why people fall into the blind victim illusion. So number one, Playing victim can actually make you feel powerful. So people always think that playing victim is this weak position, but sometimes playing victim can make you feel powerful in the short term. So for example, when you shift blame, it can make you feel very powerful because there you're basically propping yourself up while bringing other people down, saying, it's not my fault, I'm the perfect product, it's everybody's fault. And reason number two is that it's also a very easy distraction. Right? So if it's never your fault, if it's other people's fault, if your situation is so unique and so different that there's nothing you can possibly do to fix your situation, if complaining about your problems all the time and playing the drama actually gets you attention, that feels really good in the short term because it absolves you of any work, absolves you of doing the difficult introspection. You don't need to be humble for that. You don't need to do any work. There's no next steps for you because the fault is not with you. The burden of proof, the burden of work does not lie with you. So it's an easy distraction, it's an easy cop out. And number three, this is a big one is that playing victim is actually in our nature. So we need to see playing victim as just any bad habit that you, that you do, that you can get in this world. So if you look at any bad habits that you can find in this world, let's say smoking, drinking, uh, addiction to pornography, addiction to playing victim, all bad addictions, they always reward you instantaneously, but they punish you in a delayed fashion. So if I smoke a cigarette, it rewards me right now but it might not be till 10 years later, 20 years later before I get cancer. Same thing from playing victim. When I play victim, I blame other people, I blame circumstances, whatever it is. I get instant gratification, but I might not feel the effects of victimization until 10, 20 years later. Now, conversely, if you look at any good habits, any healthy habits, they always punish you right now, but they reward you later. For example, you eat the salad. You punish you right now with a bad taste, but you might not get the benefits of eating that salad till much later. Same thing when you work out. You get the instant suffering right now, but you're not gonna see the benefits of it till much later. Same thing if you don't play victim, if you avoid playing victim. In the short term, you have to confront that this is your fault, maybe. That you need to do some work. You need to be humbling yourself. But you might not see the benefits of this till much later. So, if you look at this disparity, you can see why our brains are wired towards us getting more bad habits, which is why sometimes it's easier to get a, pick up a bad habit and it's so hard to remove the bad habit and replace it with a better one. And so this is also why it's so easy to play victim and we play victim without even knowing it sometimes because it's so easy. Our brains are wired to want to play victim. Reason number four is that playing victim is also very self-confirming. So especially in a relationship setting. So we talk about this concept of a feedback loop a lot where what you do affects what your partner does. So let's say you play a victim and you blame your partner. You blaming your partner destroys safety and creates even more um, defense mechanisms, even more self-preservation, which makes her do more toxic things. As she does more toxic things, you interpret this with your victim mindset and you blame her and you say, well, see, I told you this is her fault, which perpetuates this whole cycle even more. So it's self-perpetual. And unless you are antithetic enough to catch yourself, break that pattern, you're always gonna be falling for the same pattern over and over again. And number five is that playing victim has always been a trend. Because again, of how easy and how human nature it is to play a victim. If you look at the most popular videos around stonewalling, around gaslighting, around affairs, it's always playing victim. It's always pinning the other person as a problem. Look at this. If you make a video, if I make a video about pinning the blame on other people, I guarantee you I have a lot more views. P people like that, people love that. And it's perpetuated by media, society, etc. So society has conditioned us to be okay with playing victim. And the fact is that many of you may not know that you're playing victim until I call out the different ways of playing victim right here. Let me give you an example of my client here as well where, you know, this is the first thing that we talk about in our program is 
the avoiding the victim mindset and letting people be aware of the many subconscious ways they fall into the victim mindset. And this is hard for people. And it's not until sometimes we point it out to people and make them hyper aware of their victim mindset that they become aware of it. And a lot of you watching this video too may be assigning a lot of the stuff I talk about to, oh yeah, my partner did this, my partner did that. Right? My partner needs to do better on this, my partner needs to do better on this. If you are doing that, if you're watching a video and instead of using the principles to teach yourself, but you're using the principles to wish that your partner did something different, you are playing victim already. So just notice how insidious this is and how easy it is to fall into the blind victim illusion. But while victims feel strong in the short term, the victims actually are very weak and very powerless. Because number one, you are basically admitting that outside forces have control over your life and that you have no control over your outcomes, over the direction of your life. Basically, you're saying everything that's happening with your life right now is because of your partner. It's because of everything else that is outside your control, that you have no ability to respond to your environment. Now, that to me is the epitome of powerlessness, of weakness. You're basically admitting that you have no power. And reason number two is that if let's say all the problems are because of something outside your control, then whatever solutions you get will be out of your control. And you'll be powerless and you will find that people who play victim a lot, they're very demotivated. They're very apathetic. They're very hopeless in, their, in whatever they do. So for example, if you watch a lot of stonewalling videos, a lot of people play victim on that and say, oh, if your partner stonewalls you, that means it's, it's her fault. It's a problem with them. They need to fix it. Well, if that's your diagnosis, then the treatment you get will be, well, there's something I can do. It's really up to her. I mean, that's very disempowering. But for us, and we tell our clients this all the time, if your partner is stonewalling you, look at what you're doing. Look at the safety you're creating or the lack of safety you're creating. Look at the culture you're creating. Did you do anything to cause that stonewalling or did you not? Are you helping that stonewalling or are you making it even worse? Are you making her want to self-preserve even more or less? And usually what's beautiful is that when they look within and stop playing victim, they can change the culture again. And once they change the culture, the stonewalling goes away. And this happens time and time and time again. We enroll a thousand plus people every single year and this happens time and time and time and time again. Number three, it destroys safety. You know, imagine if a company you're working for, your boss, the leader, the CEO you're working for plays victim a lot. Whatever's happening to the company, he's always blaming it on, on external stuff, on uncontrollable things, on his employees, on other people, but never himself, never his own leadership. Would you be able to feel safe around that leader? Of course not. You cannot feel safe around a victim. And when you cannot feel safe around a victim, it makes you powerless even more. It makes you not be aware of actual problems in a relationship. And we talked about this in another video, so I'm gonna reroute you to that video if you wanna learn more about why the lack of safety causes you to be more powerless in a relationship. And number four is that if you look at playing victim itself, that is in itself a defense mechanism that is bred out of a lot of insecurity, a lot of weakness, a lot of low self-esteem there. Because high self-esteem people are not gonna be playing victim. High self-esteem people with high self-worth and high self-efficacy, they're always gonna to want to take control in a healthy way of their situation, and they're always going to be embracing responsibility. The people who run away from responsibility are the people who are usually insecure, who are usually weak fundamentally internally. So if it's bred out of weakness, it's gonna keep making you weaker. And number five is that it ruins your life because it perpetuates negative outcomes and it perpetuates the self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, look at the lives of victims. All they do usually is in YouTube comments, etc. they complain, complain, complain. They play the woe is me attitude. My situation is so different, so unique. They blame shift and they keep doing this cycle. And it could be them when they're 60 years old, 70 years old, they're still playing the same narratives. They're still playing the same victim mindset and then they can never get out of it. And they become weaker, more embittered, more angry every single day. And so you have a lot of bitter people the older they get. And so I'm gonna put a bunch of links down below and where you can see a lot of my client stories who fell into the victim mindset, who were so blind to it, but once they become aware of it, that's when everything changes for them. So you get to see here how they spotted it, how they built their awareness of it, how they reversed it, and how once they reversed it, it changes their whole course of their lives, of their relationship, and everything starts. Your whole journey must start with you seizing, you stopping to play victim. And again, sometimes we play victim in ways that we don't even imagine. We don't even realize yet because it's so easy to become a blind victim. And victims also make for very bad partners. So first of all, again, we cannot create safety. It's impossible to feel safe with someone who plays victim. You cannot break feedback loops because let's say your partner does something negative 
if you are playing victim, you'll always blame your partner and you will get upset yourself and you will do nothing to reverse that feedback. In fact, you'll perpetuate that. What you do matters here. And if you look at great leaders, again, they never do this. Sure, the fault can be their employee's fault. Sure, the fault can be other people's fault. Sure, the fault can be the economy's fault. But a good leader in a business, for example, will always take responsibility, will always understand that, hey, okay, things happen. Now it's my job. Now I have the power to actually turn this from negative to positive, to turn the ship around. But victims never do this. So whatever feedback loops, the negative feedback loops that are starting, they will just keep happening. They can't break it. And if you can't break it, you can't create a thriving relationship. You can't reconcile. Forget about that. Number three, they get very defensive and they perpetuate the blame game. So whenever you point out something about your unhappiness, about problems in a relationship, instantly they get defensive because they're coming from this weak position and they pin the blame on you. They say, oh, it's different. My situation is different. You don't get it. They're really difficult to talk to. They're really difficult to connect to. They're really difficult to criticize. They're really difficult to give feedback to because they get really defensive very, very fast. They're uncoachable and can never grow. Again, I hear this a lot. I say to people, hey, your situation is not really that unique. If you create safety, it'll be good. But then they come up with a million different reasons of why that wouldn't work. They will say, oh, you don't understand, Jeff. This is what I feel. This is what I feel. This is what I feel. My case is unique in this way, in that way, in this way. And this also appears in your relationship, I bet. When let's say your partner is trying to understand you, understand what you feel, and maybe talk to you about some adult conversation. And you always play the card of, you don't get it. No, what if they actually get it more than you think? What if you're just saying that because you want to play victim so that you can dismiss whatever hard work, whatever hard truth that your partner is giving you about what you actually need to do to get out of your predicament? That's a narrative and that's what places people in the catch 22 when dealing with victims and why if you are playing victim, it should be no mystery why your partner wants to get the F out of here, right? Because it's impossible to live with the victim. So basically, if you keep playing the victim and it doesn't matter if you're playing the victim knowingly or unknowingly, whether you're aware of it or not, you cannot build the five pillars, let alone build the internal shifts needed to build the five pillars. So if you don't know what these five pillars are, if you don't know what the internal shifts are, then I suggest you join me in my masterclass. Click the link uh, down below or above my head right now. But to end this, I want to show you some different techniques or different tips or mindsets to get yourself out of the victim mindset. So number one is I want you to pay attention to your influences, the things you watch on the web, does what I watch, does the philosophies I watch get me to become a victim or no? And again, remember again that victim philosophies often sound great because they reward you right then and there, but they punish you later. They're so easy to absorb and they make you feel good. You just need to ask yourself one question. Does this piece of advice, does it force me to deny or forget the fact that I need to respond? Does it talk about how I need to respond or does it just pin the blame on other people and pin the blame on something outside your control. So videos like 10 signs your partner's a stonewaller, they feel good to watch those because you can start to judge and pin the blame on your partner the whole time. But does it actually remind you and give you insight on your own responsibility? I don't think so. If it doesn't, stay out of that. Stick with the ones that do. Number two, understand your power in changing culture, changing environments, and hence changing people. I made a video about this last uh, two weeks ago where we talked about does it take two to tango? And we said there, yes, while you can't change people directly, you have no idea about your power to change the culture, the environment. And once you can change the culture, you'll be very surprised as to how much you can change people. So a lot of victims like to play this narrative of, well, I can't change other people, so there's nothing I can do. Nope. Your responsibility is not to change other people. Your responsibility right now is to change the environment, the culture. And that's always within your control. Number three, remember that things may not always be your fault. But for leaders, they always pay attention to the response anyway. For followers and for people who are not successful, they'll always use that, not my fault, as an excuse. So here, I want you to take 100% responsibility for your 50%. I mean, imagine working in a company with someone who always says like, well, that's not my job. That's not my fault. I didn't do that. I didn't make the mistake. Bye. Is that a leader that you can trust, that you can feel safe with, that you want to be with, that you want to spend the rest of your life with? Of course not. You want to get out of that person's life forever. Same thing here. Stop wasting time pinning blame and finding out whose fault it is. Just acknowledge your responsibility and just do something about it. Number four, 
your case isn't as unique as you think. So again, guys, if you think your situation is so unique, guys, I want you to ask yourself some questions, okay? Do you know that we enroll a thousand plus people every single year? And all those people waited till things are very dire before getting my help. So for you to think your situation is unique is a bit weird, given that case. Second thing, if you watch all my client stories, you will see that they started off in very different scenarios, very different problems, very unique problems, but always the process to getting from zero to 100 is always the same. So it's create safety, create the five pillars, make the right internal shifts, and you will get your relationship back. If there's a pill that can solve all the different problems in a relationship, regardless of what your problems are, what's the point of thinking that your situation is unique? If you insist that your situation is unique, then you need to ask yourself, do I think it's unique because deep down, I'm trying to escape the work that I actually need to do. Think about it deeply. Number five, and change starts with admission. Again, it's so easy to become the blind victim. And if you cannot even admit that you are falling for the victim mindset, then you can never fix your victim mindset. Again, never forget, you cannot solve your problems with the same knowledge you used to create it. So if you're telling yourself right now, I'm not playing victim, my situation is very unique. My situation is that it is my partner's fault. Whatever justifications you're making to playing victim, ask yourself, what thinking am I using to think that it is my partner's fault, that this is unique? Is it the same thinking that you used to create the problems in the first place? If it's yes, humble down. Be careful about that. Now, there's also a more advanced version of playing victim that we call the fundamental attribution error, FAE bias. And once you understand this concept of victim mindset, I want you to watch this video on FAE bias because this is going to be very revolutionary for you in terms of seeing the world in a different way and getting you out of the victim mindset in a more advanced way as well. So watch that video if you want to learn more. But with that, guys, I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next video right now. Thanks, guys.